Mohan Das uh, with us for the talk. Uh, he's a very senior psychiatrist and a well-respected uh, academic luminary in the field of psychiatry in India. And uh, I feel proud to uh, call him a very, very dear friend, though he's many years my senior. But uh, he's always treated me as uh, a friend and indulged me. So uh, I'm, I'm really privileged for that. And he is amongst the brightest and the most astute uh, minds in the field of psychiatry. He is uh, uh, somebody who I deeply admire. And uh, his grasp on uh, the entire uh, neuropsychiatry as well as the uh, entire bodily systems and how they work in tandem with the mind is something absolutely amazing. He is, he is actually uh, uh, done his post-graduation in medicine and specialized for a while in cardiology as well. So in that sense, he is a man with many, many hats and many, many feathers on each of those hats. But I shall leave the formal introduction to the chairperson and I will not want to usurp her role. But uh, it gives me an absolute pleasure and privilege to invite Dr. Mohandas to our talk today. And we are grateful that he took the time out to be with us. Uh, it also gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Poona Chandrika, uh, who's uh, very kindly consented to chair this session today and to moderate the proceedings for the evening. She is uh, currently serving as the director of the Institute of Mental Health at Chennai. Uh, she has a diploma in child health and apart from uh, her MD in psychiatry. She is uh, an associate, uh, she has been an associate professor and now a director in uh, the Institute of Mental Health at Chennai for a while now. She is an undergraduate and postgraduate teacher for 10 years. She's conducted several symposia, journal clubs. She's been a guest lecturer for many undergraduate and postgraduate training programs. And uh, uh, she is also a speaker at the Bar Council of Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. She's a speaker at the Chetinad Hospital and Research Institute. She has been a speaker at various forums she has uh, been a panelist on various uh, academic events. She has given guest lectures in various conferences across the whole country. In fact, uh, 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 our association uh, was triggered by one of those uh, events where we both were uh, co-panelists and co-chairpersons. So uh, it was an opportunity for me to in engage with her and interact with her. And it was something which uh, convinced me that we need to bring her along on board for all our academic activities, especially this one. So thank you very much, Dr. Chandrika, and uh, I'm grateful to you for having taken the time out and uh, uh, been with us today. And uh, I pass on the proceedings of the evening to you to take the uh, session forward. Over to you, Dr. Chandrika. Yes, sir. Thank you for those kind words, sir. And good evening to one and all. It's a honor to be a chair for sir, such a uh, wonderful speaker. I have met him in many conferences and the topic for today also will be very much useful for the postgraduates who are going to appear for the exam, who are joined uh, new in the first year, the second year and the, and the, uh, and the PGs who are facing the exam, sir. And um, a few words about you, sir, before we go on to the topic. It's a honor for me, sir, to be a chair for you. So, uh, sir, as, uh, current position is a consultant psychiatrist, Sun Medical and Research Center, Trichur, Kerala. And he is a director and professor, International Institute of Organizational Psychological Medicine. He is also the Indian Chair Training and Skills, International Chair in Bioethics, and also a member of the WPA Ethics Committee, Pharmacopsychiatry Section. And his previous positions is WPA Zonal Representative, Chair in WCA Section on Psychiatry. He is also the president of Indian Psychiatric Society, Indian Association of uh, Private Psychiatry, and he is also an uh, editor, Indian Journal of Psychological Medicine, Psychiatry Management, and is also the chair, South Asian Forum International. And as for his presentation and awards goes, uh, I think this won't be enough. He has done more than 1,500 presentations, more than 100 publications, and more than 40 awards, including five international awards, and he has edited five books. So, sir, it's a honor for us to be here. And we are also eagerly looking forward to this topic on the neural and biological correlates of thought disorder. So, as far as we know, once at one point of time, this uh, 
formal thought disorder was also known as the graveyard of research because even though a lot of research has been told about all the other disorders that we know about, be it schizophrenia and all the other areas, thought disorder alone, there was not much of it. So earlier it was even referred to as a graveyard of it. But later on, we are having a lot of articles on it. But to throw more light on it, we are waiting your speech, sir. Over to you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see the slides? Yes, sir. We can see the slides, sir. <coughs> I will, I mean, thank you very much, Chairperson Purna Chandriga and uh, my dear friend, um, Rishmin uh, Cholra and uh, all others for attending. Uh, Purna Chandriga has told that she has met me in many conferences because I am old. And uh, now 41 years after MD, or 42 years now, so that's what you'll be seeing in me. Uh, think, yeah. uh, you are all professors, so I am a wandering bird, which I mentioned her. Mm -hmm. I go from one place to another place. Uh, my hobby is to give talks, whether it is in India or abroad or anywhere. Uh, Rishmin, I'm extremely sorry for Rishmin because uh, she wanted me to speak uh, earlier. But today's tight commitments, I had to go somewhere, had to see 30 patients there, came back here, again, uh, 15 patients, and <laughs> almost, I don't know how did I finish faster. And uh, anyway, six o'clock, I am on time. I will not talk total neurobiology of thought disorder because that will take so much time. Uh, I will talk about some of the neural correlates which uh, of thought disorders, which I have put it caught and caught. Is there anything called thought disorder? That is my question. Because people, uh, when I was a postgraduate, um, people talk about thought disorder, and even the examination also, they will uh, talk about it. So I thought that is there an order in thought disorder? There is no order in thought disorder. That is the biggest problem. So that is why it's a graveyard uh, for researchers. So today's uh, presentation will be, scope of the presentation will be definitional dilemma. We use many terms. Some of the historical snip snippets, I am very fond of history. So I will not go into details, but I will put some of the snippets. I put clinical questions as question. Because many of the questions that you ask of our clients, do they make any sense uh, by itself? I doubt it. Whether we can shell out any sense out of the nonsense, nonsense about, uh, from the psychiatrist, not the caregivers. <laughs> so some of the questions, uh, if we take from the Google or uh, many of the medical school, Many of them are overlapping. The reason which why I told is uh, in uh, 82 or so, when I was abroad, I searched 17 textbooks and I was comparing the mental status examination. And some of the things that I have understood it, those people who write, they do not have a perfect mental state to identify what are they talking about it. So they, they that will confuse. I will not name people. I will not, uh, there's not the time to discuss on it. Then basic neuroscience relevant to thought process, some of the areas people should know. Then what are the current neuroanatomical correlates with regard to some of the thought disorders and the conclusion? What are the different definitional dilemma? 
what is speech and thought? This is the first thing. Speech refers to a mechanical act of uttering words using the neuromuscular apparatus responsible for phonation and articulation. But thought refers to goal-directed flow of ideas, associations of symbols. I'm talking about Fredman Kaplan, good old definition. The ability to express ideas cogently and coherently. The act of thinking about or considering something, an idea or opinion, or a set of ideas about a particular subject. Very catchy word like thought. So when we talk about the neural correlates, can we correlate any, anywhere? Because it covers everything. For example, you have to express the ideas, how cogently and coherently. And you have to have the act of thinking or you have to consider some, an idea or opinion Uh, so many areas are involved. So there is a term called speech disorder. It is an umbrella term for any one of the following. Articulation disorder, phonological disorder, apraxia of the speech, the prosody. Some of the PG students, I have heard uh, some of the examiners ask about uh, prosody. I think it is nonsense from the examiner when we talk about the speech as thought disorder. Rhythm, stress, intonation of the speech fluency and the voice disorder. This comes under speech disorder. Now the question is whether language is necessary in thought process. Answer is yes and answer is no. Because I will explain that. Thought, it's a complex and multifaceted activity. It's often revealed to a symbolic system of language, absolutely correct. So language is important, but cannot be regarded as synonymous with language. I will give you some explanation. Language is the principal method of human communication consisting of words used in a structured and conventional way, conveyed by speech, writing, or gesture. Suppose somebody asks you, how are you? You need not answer, I am okay. I can show with my facial expression. Have you passed your exam? You need not say I failed or nothing. You can show thumbs up or like this, just now, visual tasks demonstrating sophisticated problem solving can be completely spared in markedly aphasic patients. So, language and there is a disconnect. Thinking may be grossly disturbed in schizophrenic patients, obviously with a thought disorder, who have intact language. So, language is necessary, but it is sufficient, but it is not that absolute. You can have. So there is something called a new term, thought language communication disorder. So is it a thought language communication disorder? Yes, but it can only measure the severity of the formal thought disorder. Now, there's a problem of formal thought disorder also. Many people, even under Ashwin, you would have uh, been taught them through fish psychopathology or even uh, my friend's uh, book on symptoms in mind. Okay. But what is form, formal, that is formation of the thought disorder, that the product is manufactured, manufacturing defect. What is the form is a different from formal. Anyway, I will not go into details that uh, after the postgraduate teachers to explain. 
We will go to the some of the historical concepts. Initially, in 1835, James Collis Pritchard mentioned a word called incoherence, flaws in the connection between thoughts in his treatise on insanity and other disorders affecting the mind. In 1852, Joseph Goislein, I will not go into the history of Goislein because then I have to talk about so many history about his neurological understanding, etc. I will not go into details. Incoherence, this ideas, distinction between thought, including FTD is not frontal top dementia, it is formal thought disorder and speech disorders. He tried to distinguish between speech disorders and thought disorders. William Grisinger in 1867 distinguished for the first time the formal deviation from false content. Ewald Hecker in 1871, peculiar departure from normal logical sentence structure with frequent changes in the direction that may or may not lose the train of thought. Later, you would have heard from fish psychopathology, what is tangentiality, what is circumstantiality. Circumstantiality reaches the goal. Tangentiality will not reach the goal. But Julius Seglas, this uh, gentleman's description I like so much in 1892, speech could be divided into dyslogies, thought disorders, distorted logics, dysphasis, language disorders, or dysalis, speech disorders. So the thought disorders, that's called dyslogies, four types, the tempo, it can be increased or decreased rate of thought. Four, changes in the plaintiveness of thought or even verbiguration. Syntax, referring to the self in the third person or disintegration of sentence construction, then the content, including the fixation of certain themes, stereotypes. And, but unfortunately, he has put um, in a stereotypes and neologism in the content. Neologism, neo means a new construct of the thing. That should be a formal thought disorder, theoretically. The content, you can describe it, this is what the client has thought. But the origin is the formation because that is a new coinage of word which is there only in the client's dictionary, which is not seen anywhere. So it is a synthesis of a new word that's a formation. Stereotypy, people talk about stereotypy of action, stereotypy of talk. People try to differentiate, how to differentiate with the perseveration and stereotype of talk. And that means, what is your name? Mohandas, Mohandas, Mohandas. What is your father's name? Shankar warrior, Shankar warrior. So that is stereotyping. But in a perseveration, they cannot shift from the set. What, what is your name? Mohandas, Mohandas, Mohandas. What is your father's name? Mohandas, Mohandas, Mohandas. Where are you from? Mohandas, Mohandas, Mohandas. That is perseveration. You cannot shift the focus. Your postgraduate teachers will describe you. I am not taking a mental status examination or uh, even lecture. There's a term called Emil Kaplan, use the term called acataphasia. That is one of the linguistic expression disorders frequently in dementia precox. Dementia precoci, then dementia precox, was, was by Emil Kraplin. Then Eugen Bloiler. In 1911, everybody teacher says that loosening of association. He told about loosening of Did he really coin the term? He coined the term. But what was the letter? The letter he has got, a, it was not loosening of association. Critically, if you Analyze it. Later, I will give you the explanation. Paul Schneider, if somebody talks about fish psychopathology, 
they will say Carl Schrader, not the Kurt Schrader, that is Schneiderian rank symptom. This is Carl Schrader, the derailment, fusion, suspension, and delivery. Very sad story of Carl Schrader. He committed suicide. Uh, you can go through the history why he committed suicide because of the trials, etc. that you know it, how, I mean, uh, I will not go into detail, time will go. Kurt Goldstein in 44, 1944, used the term concrete thinking or abstraction deficit. Norman Cameron, he has used the term over-inclusiveness but he has used a term called asynthesis, lack of connection between successive thoughts. Over-inclusiveness, when the patient cannot maintain the boundaries of a concept. I do have plenty of examples, which I will not give you here because your teachers will teach you when they take mental status. His book is on psychology of behavior disorder, bio, social and reputation. <coughs> Sorry. Because I do have my own um, lecture series or um, mental status examination where I enact. Uh, and also the neural correlates of each mental status. For example, suppose you sit in the room. If you get a rapport with the patient, where in the brain that happens? When you do the, when you empathize with the patient, what will happen in the brain? And from there till end, I do have my own way of explaining with the neural correlates, with psychopathology, etc. Uh, Cameron has used another term called uh, metonyms, interpretation of themes, but uh, these are all uh, jumbled things. Uh, people have taken from one person to another person. They interpenetrated with others' ideas. Uh, you can go through the literature. I will not go into detail. Everybody talk about Frank Fish. Is Frank Fish, his uh, clinical psychopathology, signs and symptoms in psychiatry, in the first book on the left side of mine, your right side, if you are a viewer. Then later on, it was edited by Max Hamilton, Fish Clinical Psychopathology, but currently, current versions are edited by the new editors. I don't want to go into the current uh, thing. When I was doing my MD, it was Frank Fish uh, and Fish Psychopathology, Max Hamilton, etc. I have gone through it. And the new, the current generation will be going through the newer versions. What disorders can be generally divided into disorders of the stream or the flow, disorders of the position, disorders of the content, and disorders of the form of thinking. Uh, I do have my own critical discussion on it, which I will not go into details. In formal disorder, the organization and the associated process of thinking, mainly the abstract component and conceptualization are impaired. Hamilton in 74, he has used another term called apophony, that is, such as fusion and driveling by Carl Schrader and allogy, thought without logic. I will not go into details. But here comes Nancy and Riasen. She told formal thought disorders should be redefined and regrouped into new categories of thought, language, and communication disturbances. He divided into three groups, communication disturbances, language disturbances, and thought disturbances. Then came our uh, diagnostic classification. The current classifications are only thought disorder, disorganized speech, okay? Now some of the critical questions that usually you ask or your teachers, what do you to ask? There are so many overlaps. What process or thought form implied or observed the logic, the relevance, organization, floor, coherence of thought in response to general questioning during the interview. Descriptors are linear, goal directed, circumstantial, tangential, loose association, incoherent, evasive, racing, blocking, perseveration, neologism. I will not go into details. 
So in a thought disorder, suppose you are teaching the students, you will see this phenomenon. It starts from a conversation and there is apparent connection and it goes without reaching the goal as if somebody has thrown a tangent into the aerospace. So it will not reach the goal. That is what we call tangentiality. Then we do have, this is the so-called flight of ideas. Apparent association is there from connections are there, rapid and abrupt jump, characteristic of mania, and you can get in other conditions. Now you can have the thought can be clubbed down without any discussion. For example, suppose you ask a proverb, usually they say they cannot really explain the rationale for that. So the thought is compressed and it becomes concrete. That is concretization. Uh, I do have many explanations, but uh, I will refer. Thought block is when a patient stops talking, but he will not start from where he has stopped and he cannot explain why he has stopped. In a dementia, they may stop it. <coughs> they may be able to say why he has stopped it. In a schizophrenic thought disorder, if there's a thought block, they will stop talking, but they cannot start with for, from where they have stopped. Then you have got the first one, circumstantial <coughs> circumstantiality, start from one place, goes in a circuitous way, but reaches the goal. Do your thoughts seem faster than normal? Do you, do you find you have lots and lots of different thoughts? It does your mind seem to be slowed down? Do you ever have experience when your thoughts suddenly stop? Do you ever feel your mind is suddenly white blank and you have no thoughts at all? Does anything ever take your thoughts away? Do your, you do you ever have your mind white blank, which I have already told earlier? Does anything take thoughts out of your mind so that they are not there anymore? And other people tell what you are thinking. Do your thoughts ever go out of your mind? Do your thoughts go out of your mind to other people? Are your thoughts ever put on the television or radio? There are interpretations differently. Do your thoughts go out of your mind to somewhere else? Thoughts in your mind which are not your own? Does anything else in your mind think with? Does anything put thoughts in your mind from outside? Where do these thoughts come from? And these are all repetitive, so many overlapping. Uh, anybody can uh, put any questions. Some bang association sounds rather than meaningful relationship appear to govern the topics, especially in many and other things, you know. There are paraphasias, phonemic and semantic, which I will not talk because I am not talking about the aphasic syndrome. So the question is, is there any order in thought disorder? Absence of any common ground of agreement for different definition and terms. That's the problem. Tangential speech, interpretation of the theme, over-inclusive thinking are descriptors that define aspects of flight of ideas, not separate forms of speech problem. Some people talk about it. We are not sure. Bloiler offered a classic illustration of loosening of association. We teach them in a doubt, quoting a letter. I do have that letter also, but it best illustrated flight of ideas, not loosening of association. But still we teach loosening of association. What is loosening of association? If you have put three thoughts in your mind, one, Reshmin now wanted to attend this conference, Reshmin wants to go with his wife for shopping. Reshmin's child had an exam. She has to teach something. These three thoughts come. So in, in a loosening, Reshmin will say, yeah, there is, a, there is a conference. 
but I don't know what will happen to my wife. But the child has to study a lot. Like that, they're completely disconnected and you cannot really put it. That means three thought process, put it to the same. When there is this type of connection, it is almost like a chain, cycle chain. The nodes are all broken, so it becomes loose. And in between there are gaps and that's called loosening of association. In order to tighten it, you try to tighten it, that results in concretization. Anyway, Cameron descriptions and formulation of interpretation of themes and over inclusion suggest he was observing patient with flight of ideas. You can go through the descriptive psychopathology book by Alan Trail and uh, and Nudan Atravedia. I met her and I discussed sometimes back, some years back. Now, do we have any specific tales for thought disorders? In the medical colleges, they will say, yes, sans, saps, pans, etc. That's okay, general scales. But do we have a specific tales? Some people try that. Thought and language disorder scale. Called it scale 30 items objective from subjective thought disorders and provides operational definition. That's not a bad scale. Thought language communication disorder TLC scale 18 symptoms are there, but not all FTD symptoms. Thought and language index it is basically a psychodynamic concept. Thought disorder index, especially psychodynamic thought content, takes so much time. This is the thought disorder question, some of the samples, but TDQ has got 60, 60 items, self-report questionnaire, six scales, each with 10 items, six scales, measure content of thought, control of thought, orientation, perception, fantasy symptom. See the orientation part of there. No need there at that time. This is thought language and communication, the score list 18 one. You can get from the Google. If not, you ask Rishmin, your professor, I will send him the slides or the articles. What about children? The security formal thought disorder rating scale, good old one, 1889, uh, illogical. Thinking, incoherence, loose association, poverty of content of speech, etc. You can go through the literature, Journal of American Academy of Child Psychiatry. Now we come to the topic per se. Basic neuroscience relevant to thought process. You have to know three networks. Because we talk about schizophrenia. It is a triple network dysfunction. If not multiple network dysfunction. Which are the three networks? One is your normal central executive network from the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex and the posterior parietal cortex. That's the normal one. You have got a mind wandering network or a default mode network that is ventro medial prefrontal cortex and posterior cingulate, uh, posterior cingulate cortex. <laughs> But in between, you have got a balancing act that's called salience network from the anterior insula to the anterior cingulate. In schizophrenia, there is a switch from central executive A to the default mode network. That is why your primary process thinking will take cover or make a coup of your secondary process thinking. Or the other way around. Suppose the balancing network is your ego. Central executive, if it is an id. Default mode network thinking, if it is a super ego. What the ego says is that you delay the gratification needs of the id impulse. So the super ego says fantasizing or doing even in dreams. It is not a crime. 
let it go. So ego is uh, the balancer or uh, it is a moderator or a mediator. Silence network is the mediator. So we come to the three network, the default mode network. You can see the cartoon, the blue colored the thing is medial prefrontal cortex. The yellow colored is the posterior cingulate. And here is the red one is the retrosplenial area of anterior cingulate. So anterior cingulate, this is the anterior to mid cingulate. But here, what is important default bond network is medial prefrontal cortex and the yellow region that is the posterior cingulate and cuneus. A precuneus. In parietal lobe, there are superior parietal lobe, there are two regions called precuneus and cuneus. Um, if you want to have a review on um, the precuneus, the Brain Journal has written a beautiful review, uh, written, um, I think, uh, by my uh, person who knows me very well, Trimble. Now, inferior parietal lobe may be involved lateral temporal problem and hippocampal formation, but mainly medial prefrontal cortex and posterior cingulate. Okay, now salience. For the PGs, you have to remember only insula, it's anterior insula. Insula has got anterior insula, posterior insula, even mid insula. You have to think of anterior insula. So what about posterior insula, Monda, sir? If you have got multiple somatic symptoms, somatization, that will incite the posterior cingular area, a posterior insula. And posterior insula, then mid insula, then anterior insula, then you get the somat. That is why you get a somatization, depression, axis of Lipovsky. I will not go into details. I will uh, drift from the main topic. So anterior insula and anterior cingulate. So whenever you think of cingulate cortex, anterior cingulate and para region, usually it is affecting. Posterior cingulate, you have to be a little bit careful, it is cognitive. I will not, there are many versions, the connectivity, we will not go into details. What is the central executive? Dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and the prefrontal operculum, and to some extent, it's a part of the orbit of frontal cortex and medial frontal cortex. Also, you have what the superior parietal lobule where I have told the precuneus and cuneus is there, superior parietal lobule, and inferior parietal lobule where you talk about the supramarginal gyrus and angular gyrus. Rishwin, you want me to talk about the areas, number, broadband areas, it will be too much for them. Rishwin, Whatever I will not talk about best. the broadband area also. Uh, whatever, if somebody whatever wants it, I can is, talk. Okay. No, whatever think you think is best. I, yeah, I but students, students should not get that confused, you know. So central executive is, at least they have to remember, it is dorsal prefrontal cortex, to the parietal cortex, especially superior parietal and inferior parietal. Now, what are the evidences, neural correlate? Your storage and access of lexical information, whatever is their information, it goes to the middle temporal gyrus. Temporal lobe has got superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, inferior temporal gyrus. So it goes to your storage and access of lexical information is middle temporal gyrus. It goes to the anterior temporal cortex where the combination of lexical representation and integration of the context, both are elaborated upon in anterior temporal cortex. Then, your posterior inferior frontal gyrus, there the combination of and the selection of controlled retrieval of lexical representation. Inferior frontal cortex uh, gyrus has got so many other things. People might ask, what is there in inferior frontal gyrus? Mirror neurons. 
Okay, in front of terrace, you know about the broca's area, etc., peri broccal area. Anyway, now lastly, AG, angular gyrus, that is combination of lexical representation of integration with the content. Now I will give an example for you. Suppose I am seeing this pin now. I see his photo. How do I see that? It goes to the occipital cortex, by occipital area, especially the visual area, the secondary visual cortex. It goes to the multimodal area, that is the supramarginal gyrus and angular gyrus. Then it goes to the orbitofrontal gyrus uh, with, uh, to add emotion. Then it goes to dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and I have to decide whether it is resmin or not with the same resmin I have seen it. So it is channeled back into the memory side, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, such connectivity is hippocampus. Right? So you see resmin. So it is primary, your sensory area, heteromodal cortex prefrontal, especially orbitofrontal or medial orbital frontal cortex, also to some extent to the lateral orbital frontal cortex, then the also lateral prefrontal cortex. I mean, simple, simple. That is how you decide it. So we talk about some of the disorder problem, some areas which are important is inferior frontal gyrus. Also, some of the somatic air precentral gyrus is there. Precentral gyrus, uh, I think the students know it as it is not an interactive session. If it is a not a virtual platform, I would have demonstrated how you do it. Areas also. Now, postcentral gyrus, supramarginal gyrus, also the angular gyrus, but most important you have to know the superior number gyrus. So here afterwards, you have to remember superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, inferior frontal gyrus, at least these three things that you have to know. Also, supramarginal and angular gyrus, five. What are they? Superior temporal, middle temporal, inferior frontal gyrus, and supramarginal and angular gyrus, that is inferior parietal lobule. You can put it four or five. Okay, simple. Now we come to behavioral domains of speech and auditory processing. Left superior temporal gyrus. Where is the superior temporal gyrus? You can see here the blue. This is the posterior superior temporal gyrus, you can see here. So I have told you, superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and inferior one. Here is a superior, uh, uh, left superior temporal gyrus, behavior, domains of speech, and auditory process. Semantic processing of language related information, posterior middle temporal gyrus. I told you to remember superior temporal gyrus and middle temporal gyrus. This is very important. But middle temporal gyrus has got a ventroposterior and dorsoposterior portion. Don't go to the microstructures, at least middle temporal gyrus is enough. Then I told you to remember the dorsally located past of middle temporal gyrus, social cognition and theory of mind, which we talk in schizophrenia. So I have told you some areas that you have to remember. In for thought disorders, there's an altered function in inferior frontal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus. Posterior cingulate cortex is a part of default monitor. And what is CN? 
what is here? Coordinate nucleus, because thalamus also has got some connection to the filter, to the coordinate nucleus, and also anterior cingulate. But altered structure, nucleus acumen, orbitofrontal cortex, and memory, hippocampus, whenever hippocampus is there, amygdala will say me too, because emotional representation. Because amygdala is important for emotional memories. But you can have altered structure and function in one area that is superior to amygdala. So the most important portion is temporal lobe, superior temporal gyrus and middle temporal gyrus, inferior frontal gyrus, and also anterior cingulate to some extent, posterior cingulate cortex because of the default mode network, and orbitofrontal cortex and amygdala emotions and hippocampus, your memory system. Nucleus acumens, basically, you are to help the thalamic uh, the thing, uh, the Gabardi thing to be diverted up. Positive functional connectivity between regions of default and executive networks. These are some of the findings, which I told you in schizophrenia, default mode network take a coup over the executive network. That is why you get hypofrontality, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. And if there's a positive symptom, hypertemporality, you would have heard that is there. And you can get uh, sometimes frontotemporal disconnection. So is it frontotemporal disconnection? It is frontoparatotemporal disconnection. Because you were uh, some of the areas in the parietal cortex are also involved so in schizophrenia or thought disorders, there's a frontal temporal parietal disconnection. Also the insula, precunius, etc. are involved. So we come to one of the gentleman pressure. He usually writes some summer. Lancet Psychiatry 2018, one article is there, it's okay, you can go through it. It's not that exhaustive, you can go through it. So there are stuff called positive formal thought disorders and negative formal thought disorders. Don't go to confusions. In a negative thought disorders, poverty of, you cannot produce it, that means diverse areas, and especially the prefrontal areas is completely gone, right? I will come to that. Positive reduction in cortical volume in positive symptoms, left superior temporal, middle temporal, and bilateral frontal opercula. What is opercula in the frontal region, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, orbital frontal cortex, and uh, your um, uh, medial prefrontal cortex, the margin is called uh, the opercula. It submerged opercula. There's a temporal opercula, frontal opercula, everything is there. Functional imaging, involvement of right superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and bilateral anterior cingulate. You can see in the blue is anterior cingulate, superior temporal is in red or violet, you can say, yellow is middle temporal gyrus. Negative formal thought disorders, volume reduction in bilateral, medial, frontal, and orbital frontal cortex, also dorsolateral frontal cortex. So, prefrontal cortex completely down and out in negative thing. That is, we get mainly in type 2 schizophrenia, chronic schizophrenia, etc., or disorganized. Alteration in gravitational structure and neural activity of cortical regions involved in language processing. But pre lexical and semantic processing of single words and sentences, I didn't uh, discuss the formation of uh, the words and everything. What is lemma? What is syntax? And all these things I didn't go into detail. Middle temporal gyrus, superior temporal gyrus, and their cell size. 
top down semantic syntactic articularly constraints how it does it happen inferior frontal areas and angular gyrus so superior temporal gyrus middle temporal gyrus inferior frontal area angular gyrus supramarginal gyrus and if you want posterior parietal especially junior structural studies bilateral gray matter deficit in the language network in particular encompassing the bilateral inferior frontal gyrus left frontal operculum which i did in put it it is covering the margin bilateral superior temporal gyrus and left superior temporal sulcus that is nearby and also left angular gyrus and this one is supramarginal gyrus inferior parietal lobule or component resting state functional mri studies has suggested hyperactivity in bilateral language network superior inferior frontal and you know it frontal area and also the superior temporal gyrus middle temporal gyrus and the inferior parietal lobule what is that angular and supramarginal gyrus recently in 2021 i don't know whether it is published now it is only numbered there's a seed connectome based predictive modeling studies fmi arresting fmri data 277 six subjects seven multi center uh, multiple especially employed machine learning to investigate the neurobiological correlates of first uh, formal thought disorders along positive and negative symptom dimension in schizophrenia positive formal thought disorder <coughs> sorry <coughs> a network associated with higher order cognitive function suggesting it's a dis executive contribution to formal thought disorder schizophrenia what is this executive dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex and little bit of orbital frontal cortex even they have found the fusiform gyrus just below the hippocampal gyrus is hyperactivated during the formal thought disorder this is picture presentation of the fusiform gyrus also positive formal thought disorder right medial superior frontal gyrus you can see from the cartoon here which is rotating increase resting state functional connectivity to the superior temporal gyrus seed we call it seed in connectome you have got the node you have got the Anyway, a hub, etc. I will not go into connectomics, which I had to present in Bangalore for two hours only on connectomic. Uh, I will not confuse the PGs; they need not read it. Okay, PGs should pass without connectomics. Uh, they have to know at least there is something called the connectomics. Exhibit increased neural activity during great, greater semantic retrieval demands. so when you think of retrieval demands are there the superior frontal gyrus is in not only the thalamus thalamic dorso medial subfield was identified as differently connected to left dorso posterior medial middle temporal gyrus seed what is thalamus doing here thalamus is essential because uh, it is connected to layer 4 of cerebral cortex it is important because uh, thalamus is the filter for example suppose you have got multiple thoughts coming you restrict many thoughts and you take whatever is needed in so called schizophrenia people say the pore size of the schizophrenic brain is bigger so it cannot filter out so many thoughts really come and that jam and uh, your thoughts will go this way that way middle way etc 
So thalamus is the real filter. And the thalamus is also involved in working memory. You would have talked about a working memory. What is working memory dysfunction? In um, schizophrenia, there are uh, different uh, working memory models. Uh, there are uh, um, working memory, uh, there are five domains of that. I will not go into all the details. So there is a dysfunctional frondo temporo thalamic networks. Compared to healthy controls, what about the high risk patient? So, that is high risk, ultra high risk, etc. When the Australian people talk it ultra high risk. Short bilateral because they have got that uh, uh, the thing that's called a prodrome, early intervention um, in psychosis. This is a journal. I call it prodrome, prodrome syndrome, and postdrome. Uh, my classification is prodrome, prodrome syndrome, and postdrome. And I do have correlation, all those things. So compared to healthy controls, the risky group, they have got a bilaterally reduced ventral diencephalon, hippocampus volume, increased cortical thickness in right fusiform, superior frontal chiaris, frontal polar, reduced connectivity between language network and sensory motor and default point network. Common sense, man. What about passivity? We talk about passivity. Is it needed? Okay, fine. Some people talk about There is an early study in 2008. There is a superior temporal sulcus activation, power activation of parietal cortex in passivity. A right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, you can see here, mismatch of intentional movement and visual feedback. And also anterior cingulate self-monitoring because you identify yourself that you are not. So identity problem is there. That's why passivity, as if somebody is influencing you, as if somebody is doing something to you. Now, I will not go into details of delusion. A delusion, uh, I think uh, PG should be asked, what is a delusion? It is a false, fixed, incorrigible belief. It cannot be shaken up. It cannot be corrected. That is not shared by the client of the same, I mean, or the people of the same socio cultural educational background. Then only it is a delusion. So they, some people will ask, is something called delusional induction? Autochthonous delusion was, uh, is put to some people, put uh, that is a primary delusion. Some people put it, it's called delusional intuition. Okay. Now, what happens in delusion? Cognitive dysfunction, that means prefrontal dysfunction is there, hyperfrontality. Impaired spatiotemporal integration, that's a wrong inference. Post, that is prefrontal cortex, attention dysfunction in the executive side, working memory dysfunction. And Hippocampal integration is there, increased dopamine is there, that is the subcortical mesolimbic area, improper attention conduct integration. Self monitoring defect is because of the anterior cingulate, misinterpretation of the intention, theory of mind. Theory of mind um, is a little bit different from um, empathy, but TOM is, um, there is subtle difference, but many areas in TOM and empathy and mirror neurons are involved in all those things. Some of the slides, uh, my slides previously, you'd have seen the difference between TOM, uh, empathy and uh, mirror neurons where the overlaps, it, ha it happens. Thus also the stress can induce it transition to delusion. Sometimes acute stress can produce a short, that is a HPA, axis of the multi, which can induce dopamine overdrive, not only overdrive because there is a glutamatergic dysfunction, which I will not discuss. I'm not talking in neurochemistry here. Now, some people have put areas there, 
subsequent resolution by the title of guilt uh, and even nihilism as in the uh, uh, thing area 22 and 21 capgras delusion including uh, the uh, area uh, then frontal pole is the area here this is frontal pole this is a uh, uh, capgras is temporal so temporal frontal disconnectivity mind control alleviation mind control temporal lobe. Uh, grandiose basically is uh, basically is a frontal deficit especially frontal pole and other places so i think i will stop here i have uh, talked enough confusion there's a conceptual confusion exist across terminologies do we have a clarity never will we get a clarity never ever why it is so psychiatry has been borrowed from psychology and other philosophy so many jargons have crept into psychiatry and each one uses the jargon and we as the students we engulf it and we have vomited it out for the satisfaction of our teachers without having a thought in ourselves unfortunately Thought disorder encompasses multiple brain areas, especially language areas. Not always, which I have already told. Usually, triple network dysfunction. Schizophrenia is basically a triple network dysfunction. Accounts for the diverse symptomatology. The Rishmin has to be happy because one of the boys from um, Bombay. Uh, in Nair Hospital, he had did residency there. Uh, he is from uh, known to my friend's son, and he after that the MD he went to UK. He was with the little little group, and he is one of the now the authorities on triple network dysfunction. Okay, so the credit goes to the Bombay people. Now, future connectomics data may shed further insight, but connectomics is an area. It is almost going to a forest where uh, you will lose your way, because when we talk about the connectomics, we talk about the structural connectivity. You talk about the functional connectivity, but we talk about dynamic connectivity. For example. Suppose you do the restrictive functional state, the thing suddenly the client laughs, or for reason, specific reason, or cough, or do some gestures, not because of the illness. It can be a dynamic connectivity. The pattern changes, and very difficult to do the networking there. I think I have to say thank you very much. Thank you, Chair Purna Purna Chandra Prabha and. Purna Chandriya and uh, Rishmin will enlighten you all. I am a practitioner. Whatever little I know, I have shared. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. Sir, so, uh, the listeners can uh, type in your questions. And uh, the thanks a lot for the wonderful insights, sir. The way you told you have read over seventy textbooks and uh, have your own definitions and your. Journey from the 1861 to the present fish textbook, the cover which I saw only today, the older textbook of fish, and uh, the Krishna article of Lancet 2018 where it talks about the FTD of phenomenology to neurobiology, sir. That's that correct. Article, uh, that uh, that article uh, uh, also talks about uh, this. Uh, the question in my mind is why have you not? Uh, it it says in this conclusion about why should we not work with neuro linguistics because it says uh, the language is the one of the human ability which has been there for many many years together and it has also been researched so widely but we have not till now coordinated with the neuro linguistic department in working out something. So your thoughts on that, sir, which has been told in that article. Absolutely, I have gone through through and through uh, that article. Uh, it was a general overview, and um, linguistic is a part of, because whenever we talk about language, it has to be a linguistic thing. It doesn't mean much to me, but when I want to correlate in um, disorders, especially schizophrenia, OCD. 
bipolar depression you have been depressive thoughts yeah, very difficult uh, the language areas and i do have some literature on the white matter connectivity etc but i didn't want to stretch that uh, thing all white matter details i do have but it is not that easy uh, to correlate with the terms that we usually embrace support we have to have new terms for that so in selected condition for example in ocd suppose uh, the thoughts comes inside is it uh, which way different from a schizophrenic thought process coming i mean because ocd is right lateralized schizophrenia is left lateralized okay so it's not that easy as such the content to explain but uh, we can to some extent summarize for example neuroimaging studies where you get a depressive ideation suicidal ideation we can have some ideas content we can do it but the structure you have to go to as you have rightly told in neurolinguistics if you talk about neurolinguistics then why do you want to have thought disorder why don't you have a speech disorder talk disorder talk disorder everybody has got it yeah, because everybody talk loose talks also <laughs> talk uh, speech disorder and the thought disorder should be combined into another category then we can have even connective models areas and connect for example if you talk about dyslexia we do have definite correlates dyslexia we do have correlate the only problem is thought disorders the thought disorders because our psychiatric thought was deranged at that time when they conceptualize thought so we have to redefine it then we will get answers if you put a what you call a project wherein you are not sure about what you are talking about it how can you get the results out uh, so any neurolinguistic everything is wonderful but what are you searching for you have to know okay first and is our classification the terms are they fine i i disagree for example you have got a symptomatic diagnostic classification in your dsm 5 or icd 10 or 11 or what not it is the top to bottom model you are analyzing the symptoms and you are correlating with this but instead if it is a bottom up model we will know how does it happen right but we then we have to have a different model of classification of psychiatric disorders what about the genetic models classification what about the neural connectivity classificatory model whether we can marry that one with the your symptomatology model that is how we have to say we don't say that phenomenology is bad it is good but how can we connect it for example neuro chemistry this one is up the other one is down neuro imaging where is the specificity where is the specificity if you don't see this that is not the disease you cannot say that so i call them fashionable images neurochemistry every neurotransmitter is involved me too that is called me too phenomena but we know that psychosis dopamine but it is a pre synaptic brought up what of dopamine is important rather than don't people talk about it you are the reference you have talked about it Uh, in lancet glutamatergic problems they have tried to synthesize the genetics epigenetics and synthesize to 
uh, the glutamate uh, mischiefs. But uh, glutamate is another uh, a neurotransmitter with so much complexities. I think uh, two or three places I have talked about the confusion about glutamatergic. Whether schizophrenia is a hypertop uh, glutamatergic state or hyper uh, glutamatergic state, it is both. It is a hypo NMDA receptor type, but hyper non NMDA state. Okay, like that, we can put it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions for from the postgraduates here? I don't see any. Rashmin, sir, I don't see any um, questions in the chat box. You would like to add anything? No, I think uh, we are good. Yes. Thanks a lot, sir, for the wonderful insight you gave us. And the postgraduates will be benefited by the perspective shared here. And uh, it was wonderful that uh, you have shared this uh, from the phenomenology to the latest neurobiology. And I think you have given, a part two has to be given by you, sir. Not me too. That you too has to give us a part two later in the same formal thought disorder or TLC, bar TLC or Still, we have not got any order till now. Maybe we'll find a definition in the next part of the series where Dr. Rashman has to look into it and arrange for one. And definitely our postgraduates will be very much benefited by it. Thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to chair, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mohandas and Dr. Purna, both of you for having made the time for us today. Dr. Mohandas has this unique skill of uh, throwing so much information our way that it makes us feel overwhelmed, but also inadequate at the same time. So uh, thank you very much, sir. It was really an enlightening talk and uh, we much the richer for the lucidity with which you uh, explained all the neurological correlates, the various areas of the brain and the connectomes as well thrown at the last minute. And uh, this is exactly what uh, postgraduate training is all about, to be able to bring some new perspectives and new insights and to be able to put the clinical presentations in the scientific perspective with uh, uh, the neurological correlates of what psychiatry is today, as opposed to the old textbooks which talked about all the psychological aspects, etc. We've moved on and uh, I think Dr. Mohandas's talk today was an acute representation of that. So thank you very much, Dr. Mohandas, uh, for that delightful talk. And uh, this talk will be available, of course, on the website a little later, either today or tomorrow. So if you, any of you would like to revisit it, uh, because there was a lot of information. So it will take a few uh, watches for us to be able to process it, but uh, uh, that will be available. And uh, as well as the slide deck will be available on the website. So uh, we, we hope that you enjoyed this talk as much as uh, we enjoyed bringing it to you. And uh, of course, a uh, big thank you to all the participants who take the, took the time out to be with us today. And I would be remiss to not thank Sun Pharma for their benevolence and their uh, unstinted support to us uh, for this lecture series. So thank you once again, Dr. Purna, for taking the time out to chair this session. And of course, Dr. Mohandas to have taken the time out to talk to us and educate us about this important topic. Thank you very much. And uh, thank, have you, a great thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can send you the slides. Uh, yes, please, please. Yeah, we'll look forward mail. To that. Sure. You can sure. use it, you can teach them, you can add, delete, or what what all no, no, no. I don't think I don't think I can add or delete, but we just what let them We'll, we'll if just you want the literature them. also, the PDF articles of all the things I do have, everything. So, that will be great, Dr. Wanders. That will be very great. good. Kind of. uh, great. I will be able to. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you and uh, Thank wish you. you a good evening ahead. Thank you okay. all. Okay. Thank okay. You. Bye. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.